Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another virtual edition of The Hub on LA TV. I'm Bruno Sirozioa. This is Natasha Martinez. And together, we're bringing you all the hot stuff. You guys, it's checking for you. You already know the segment. We're talking about stuff that you can do, which obviously is very limited right now. But time to get creative, right? So we've got possible creative date nights. We've got cooking at home. We've got Beach days, maybe? Questionable? Maybe. I don't know. Let's start off with date nights. Bruno, <laughs> have you come up with any uh, creative ways to woo a lady during quarantine? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I have. Uh, <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I am recently single. Um, haven't been on many dates uh, so far, but I definitely have some ideas. So no. I've been thinking something I see a lot um, – or I've seen I've seen in the past, but I've never done. I think like a like a wine and painting night. Oh yeah, be a lot of fun. You know, just like opening up a nice bottle of Cabernet and uh, okay, going on YouTube and finding some type of tutorial or you know what I mean, just like painting a nice sunset or a Van Gogh. <laughs> <laughs> but what is the soundtrack that you're listening to? What are the tunes that are playing during this wine date night? I mean, for me, it depends. So first of all, it depends what I'm trying to do after the painting. Yeah. <laughs> or, during, or during the painting. But something that's pretty safe um, and, and sensual is uh, late 90s, early 2000s R&B mix. Gotta be hard. Ja Rule, Ashanti. Yes. Even Jada Kiss, uh, Brian McKnight, uh, Mario, Keith Sweat. I mean... It's going to get steamy, especially if you put on the music videos. They're like, oh. <laughs> so- <laughs> well, I am so excited for you to, like, actually live out this date idea that you Thank have. You. It's very cute. I'm really um, Obviously, let's see, for, for long-distance couples out there, you know, you got to have that Zoom call or that little FaceTime session. Yes. Definitely wine is always needed. Um, but I've just been loving good old fashioned movie nights, but like go all out with the candy and the popcorn, multiple bottles of red, um, and just have yourself a marathon, like back after back, like get the movies <laughs> going. It's so much fun. Like, I, I mean, sometimes I love going to the movie theater in person, but sometimes just like being at home, like chilling, not caring is just equally as satisfying so Agreed. let's see walks outside like you said hiking walks around the park is really cute getting food to go and like taking it out on the park that's pretty cute too yes you know little sprinkle a little romanticism out there <laughs> salt bay romance um speaking of like, yeah dinner how's, how's your uh cooking at home life been i i've been struggling a little well, Bruno, before we hopped on this, the hub on LA TV at home call, um, I just made some healthier chicken nuggets. Wow. <laughs> and I learned the recipe from TikTok. Go figure. My, wow. I'm so obsessed. I like, oh, wow. have, yeah, I, I mean, I found the cooking TikTok like space, you know, there's like different spaces, right? Um, super easy. You just cut up some chicken breasts, put a lot of seasoning on there, some cayenne, some onion powder, put some breadcrumbs on there, olive oil. You bake it for like at 400 degrees, 15 minutes, throw whatever sauce you want. It's bomb. Uh, wow. and super easy. And then I've also been trying to perfect spicy rigatoni. I made it a couple of times, made it for my boyfriend, made it for some friends, my family. Yeah all a big hit so i don't know i think like chef tashi is gonna be a thing like sounds like all said and done uh and i'm also trying to work on my cocktails too like maybe i'll be like a mixologist or something and i'm just having fun with it <laughs> yes i can make a mean margarita i have to say Ooh, okay uh, thinking about the beach because as you we know the beach is the beach so. they've closed and they've opened and they've closed and they opened and i I have mixed feelings about it because no one's wearing their mask on the beach. And some, you know, during the weekends, especially in Venice and Santa Monica, there's a lot of people. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, even though it's outside, sometimes I'm like, I, I don't know. I, it just yeah. gets crowded and it freaks me out. 
I know there's more space so you can be socially distant, but then I see on like social media clusters of people together and, and that's the hard part. It's like when there's clusters, then that's Corona, you know? So I, I don't know. I, I, maybe there's like some smaller beaches out there where you can socially distance. Um, overall, I think the big beaches I would still stay away from. There you have it. Just my two cents. Just me checking for you. Checking. We're checking for you. I hope you can take advantage of some of these beautiful date opportunities we've laid out. Coming up next, we're scrolling through the feed on Scroll Control. Keep it locked. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to The Hub on LA TV. From home, I'm Natasha, this is Bruno, and we have come to the very exciting portion of our show where we scroll through our feeds so that you don't have to. It's Scroll Control, and first up, we've got sports. They're back. The NBA and the MLB are back officially, but, you know, coronavirus has not left the room. So what are your thoughts on just having these players risk the spread amongst themselves? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, definitely different. I think people in general are so happy that sports are back because it's like a comforting, like ritualistic thing for everyone. Yeah, we actually, on LATV.com, we wrote an article recently about the cutout for Dodger Stadium. Uh, you can purchase a, a cutout, um, and put your face on it, eating a Dodger dog, like you're there, and uh, you might get on the big screen. You never know. Um, so but, but how yeah, is it going for? Is it going for charity? Right? It is going to charity for the okay. Dodgers. Well, at least that's good. But um, it's it's not cheap. It's like two two hundred or three hundred dollars per yeah. seat. So the the cool thing is um, that they're back. Obviously, yeah. um, the NBA is in a bubble in Orlando at, in Disney World. Yeah. Um, and they've turned banquet centers into full-size NBA basketball courts, which is insane. Wow, that's crazy. Um, and, you know, I've seen some of the games, and it's great. You know, it's it's more intimate. It's like a scrimmage. Let's talk about giving back to communities, because a lot of communities have been hit extremely hard because of COVID. Um, and especially here in Los Angeles, you know, we're – number one with the cases at the moment. Um, and it's affecting a lot of people economically, mentally, but we also have a huge homeless um, problem here in, in Los Angeles. And in part to battle that, there's been these things called community fridges that are popping up around the city. Um, I just recently learned about it, but you sort of know a little bit more details about these things. Um, what are the community fridges? What do they do? How do they help? Yeah, so basically, um, they started to combat food insecurity, which is something that a lot of people face when they're not able to procure procure their food in a quote unquote normal way by going to a grocery store or a farmer's market. Um, a lot of our homeless are having to dig through trash and and sort of um, you know find their their sustenance that way and and mentally it can be really unstabilizing to constantly um be getting your food from from someone else's garbage so yeah the idea behind these fridges is to combat food insecurity and make fresh food available to anybody who needs it the idea behind them is you know you're free to take whatever you want and if you can um the idea is to give something back so so that you know they they are self-sustainable. Yeah, because I think that's that's where my mind automatically jumps is you hear like the initiative and what what their plans are for this and it's obviously such a selfless and caring thing to do for the community at large. Homelessness is such a huge issue. Uh, more people should talk about food insecurity and all of that. It's yeah. something that I don't think enough people talk about. So it's probably a great start but like you said, let's see how, how it rolls out and where the future of this is going. I have high hopes for it. Yes, I hope I hope it's not like the kids on Halloween because yeah. <laughs> uh, it would be a great thing if, if we could keep it going. Um, Absolutely. And something that's not so great is the rise of the Karen. Oh, gosh. We've been seeing this, obviously, all over Instagram, all over the news. Um, Karens, as they say, which are... Just kind of a generic name for grumpy white women who yeah. cannot keep their completely 
intolerable <laughs> comments and attitudes to themselves and are constantly putting other people at risk and taking advantage of situations for their benefit and no one else's. Um, putting other people at risk. Yep. There, there are women who have coughed on produce in grocery stores. Um, women who are just plain racist to tell, who tell um, people of color to go back to their countries when really <laughs> we're all not from here. It's like uh, it's so just, out of touch and bizarre. Um, I don't know. I think it's good that we're seeing this. Obviously it's been happening for way longer than, you know, especially more recently, the Black Lives Matter movement and all just standing up for racial injustice around this country. But man, it's like Karen overload. And I'm like, <laughs> someone needs to call you a mother. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think this is long overdue to expose these people. And hopefully as we expose them, they'll shrink in numbers. Um, because imagine how many of them are out there just based on what, what we're seeing in the media. You know, mm -hmm. for every one that we catch on our cell phone, there's a hundred more. And there are dudes out there doing the same thing, by the way. This is not 100%. like a, it is not, not just yeah. women. There are dudes. It's it's more about the attitude and the biases than than the gender. Um so one hundred percent. We have to go bye bye, but <laughs> not forever because we'll be back very soon. Keep it right here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on our next virtual session, we have Miss Rudy. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, let's start off with, with quarantine. How's that been for you? How's the uh, oh, process gone? You know, uh, it's like good and bad days. I'm kind of over it, to be honest. Like, I'm a pretty introverted person, so I don't mind like not being with the world, but I've even as an introvert, I feel like I'm just ready to be back to normal life and like doing things. And like, I don't even like to go to the club and I've been like dying to go. <laughs> to a club. Like I would love to get hit on by annoying men, right? That's how bad I'm like <laughs> wanting to get out of this damn house. Um, so yeah, it's been, you know, I, honestly really nice to be here with the family. I don't think I've been home this long since I was like, 14 or 15 so to get all this time with with my family has been something that I'm trying not to take for granted every day so you are a beautiful musical artist you I guess most recently are known for being on The Bachelor Presents um so maybe tell us sort of before kind of how you were building your career and then how The Bachelor uh, Listen to Your Heart jump started what's going on now I I have been doing this my whole life. Like you said, it, this, I, this industry is like, I feel like one of the hardest industries to be in. And um, everyone, everyone wants to be in it. So um, I, I've always just worked on my craft, I think is like the main thing. And, you know, even though nothing had happened till The Bachelor, I made it a point to be like, you know, I just wanted to be one of the best at, at what I, what I do. So I always just worked my ass off and, um, just try to perfect, you know, obviously I'm still not there and have ways to go, but it's like just mold myself into the artist that I am today. And, and that takes a lot of work. So, um, just writing, working with people, I, I've been doing that my whole life, but the bachelor really just well, the cool thing about the bachelor and doing what I did was that people, I feel like fell in love with me as a person too which is like a really cool thing yeah so if i'm a big i was a big fan of the show i mean i loved watching it and yeah. uh, and, and so when when um when the show came out i was like this is interesting you know music and obviously yeah. so many people go on the bachelor to, to start their career even though they don't say it they're like you know they have something else going on so it's yeah. like it's a perfect segue for that and so from that obviously you've been making music uh, or i guess after that um, yeah. You came out with a couple of singles yeah. and now you have a new, newer single. What was it like coming off the show and then recording music? Did anything change or was it just kind of? Yeah, it was definitely hard just because, I mean, living in LA, you have access to like, I mean, I have all my friends and, and all my producers and you want to go write a song in a studio, you have like, I have that right there. So right. here, um, 
I don't, I don't have anyone. I have a closet with a kind of shitty microphone. So like, um, but we, we made it work. I had, I flew one of my, my friends down. Hate LA was the one I released right after the show. Yeah. Uh, I actually wrote that one like a year ago and it was already recorded and stuff. So it, it just worked out perfectly, but stupid boy was like a different, it was a different vibe. I, I always tell people I like recorded that thing in a tiny ass closet and it was sweating the whole entire time. Like it was a lot more difficult than the other ones, but it, it came out great and it was still, you know, it's one of my favorite songs that I've, I've done. So yeah, probably, awesome. just different, different um, vibes, getting it done for sure. What is next? Are you working on stuff uh, for the rest of the year? What's yeah, the I'm just, uh, it's, I obviously want to get an EP done, but I think I want to wait until I'm able to like, I want an EP to drop and I want to go on like a tour, like whatever kind of tour that is. Yeah. So like, I'm just, however that looks uh, these days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm just working. I'm just writing. I've been writing a ton and, um, you know, just, I think just releasing singles like every month or two to just give, continue to give people music. And I have so much music to give, so why not do that until the time is right kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm doing. Maybe some music videos with some masks on. Masks on. <laughs> wow. Um, you're so cool. I'm so happy that we sat down and... Yeah, I know. Seriously, you too. Check out Stupid Boy, y'all. It's on all the platforms. Yes. And we'll wait for whatever comes next. Thank you so much. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Follow me on Instagram. I'll follow you back because you're cool. And we should be done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Welcome back to The Hub on LA TV. <laughs> we're in the masks, so you know we're talking masks on Real Talk. Oh, yeah. And today Can't we're talking... escape the masks. Although, we might need to escape them for the Real Talk so that we have nothing blocking. A lot of the videos that we've seen are just people so upset about having to wear masks. Um... I don't understand it. Uh, I've seen a lot of these videos, especially in Orange County, uh, just people showing up to the town meetings, telling them that it's their God-given right to not wear a mask, that they're poisoning themselves when they wear the mask. It's just mind-blowing. In my opinion, if wearing the mask is going to help this cor uh, like coronavirus quarantine pass by sooner then I'm gonna wear my mask like yeah I get it it's annoying it is difficult to breathe but think about when you do have the Rona and you can't breathe like I would just rather right. put it on be safe it really does not bother me that much um, especially if you know we get to do more things or just like slowly start opening things up like wear the mask please I know it's crazy I mean it's science you know it's like Asian countries uh, around the world have been wearing masks to prevent disease for a long time, and it works really well. You know, if I've been to uh, Japan and Hong Kong and, and Thailand, and anytime you take public transportation, most of the people are are wearing masks. And mm -hmm. it's not political. It's not a fashion statement. It's just it's just people doing their part in preventing disease. Absolutely. Um, and you know, it's selfless and it's collective. I, I struggle with the idea that we have, we have a difficult time finding our collective conscience here. You know, it's like, why, why can't we do things for the greater good? We're so individual and we're so, oh, only, only my life matters and whatever. And, and it's like, it's so backwards. And, and it's, I mean, if we're supposed to be this progressive democratic country, it's the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. And you made a good point bringing up the word selfless. I think that a lot of other cultures, um, really embrace that. And you can see that a lot, even breaking it down to the family dynamic and how people operate in families and in, in non-American cultures. So, you know, it's, it's more about like respect and I, obviously, <laughs> the American culture doesn't really get that idea. Um, I would just like to get into the idea that if you're going to abide by wearing the face mask and you're going to then be selfless for other people, it will, in return, give back to yourself. 
it's a very heated argument, like you said. It's become extremely, extremely political. It shouldn't be a political thing. It should be a health and community thing. Definitely. And why wouldn't you want to just get past this virus? Because really, that's what we all want to happen. So yeah. hopefully, um, hopefully more people will pay attention, put the mask on. It's not that hard. It's easier than getting COVID. I know. Way easier. <laughs> we got to take care of our, our elders, especially. You know, it's like they're so much more at risk. And anybody with pre-existing conditions, do it for the people who, who are at risk and who can't. Absolutely. But, you know, you brought up that America is supposed to be this progressive country. Um, you and I are both in California. California is supposed to be super progressive yes. and liberal but yet we just surpassed the most amount of covid cases um we're now number one so what do you think is the disconnect there is it just that maybe la is the only place that's more progressive what are your thoughts yeah i think it is that number one like obviously la is more progressive and places like the oc and huntington beach are more conservative and you see protests about masks out there and so I think there is just within California, different pockets of sort of belief systems. People in California obviously love to be free. They love to do whatever they want. We're super chill. We don't care. So yeah. that attitude is not good for what we're facing right now. Stay strong, California. We need you to wear a mask. Support your local vendors like Dirty But Delicate. Yes. <laughs> and and I'm Bristol Farms. Farms. <laughs> and Bristol Farms, shout out. And uh Great mask people. Yes, and you can get a mask anywhere. They're giving them out for free in a lot of uh a lot of towns and and uh businesses out there. So stay safe. Put your mask on and remember to follow us at the hub on LA TV <laughs> at LA TV Network. Until next time. I'm Bruno, that's Natasha. We out. Peace.